Hey, what's up, you guys, gals? I'm here, uh, kind of where it all started for me in Kona. Um, yeah, this is the Kona Hills. And uh, I'm here at Miller's Surf, which is one of the biggest um, bodyboard shops on the island, biggest surf shops on the island. And I was just gonna, whoever's interested, I'm gonna walk through my line of equipment, boards and whatnot, and explain um, what the uh, various uh, what the various features are and what they do. And uh, if you have any questions, you can post them up there, and I'll try to do my best to answer them. Um, but I want to introduce you to the guy who has been here for been in this shop for like 20 years and has built this thing up, and he's got an incredible collection of boards. So if you need boards, uh, this is a killer little zone to come down in and check out. So um, here we go. This is uh, Mark. Hey, Mike. How are you? How's it? How's it? How's it? So, Mark, uh, you said that you've been in business almost like 18 years. Yes. Almost 20 years. It's awesome. And you've started down at Banyans, kind of like back where uh, kind of the original zone was. And then yeah. now you moved out to this other place. Where, where can people find you? Are you online? We're online. We're on Facebook. Instagram, everything like that. Okay. Commercials. Miller Surf, and Mark Waldo's your guy. He's a guy that, that uh, uh, is, is the owner of the shop. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have him film me, and I'm just gonna kind of walk through what we're what we got here, so you guys can check it out. We got some new colors uh, and all these new shapes and, and features, channels, etc. So I know there's been some questions out there, and just kind of want to let everybody know, um, you know, how to. Uh, uh, or just kind of fill everyone in and what how it all works. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to start here with the Viper fins. And um, I'm going to walk over here. Yep. So we got a couple of new colors of Viper fins, the MS Vipers. Uh, we got this gray and green and this kind of light blue and pinkish color. I guess it's pretty pink. It's not pinkish. It's awesome. It's pretty, pretty yeah. pink. Anyway, these are, people are kind of frothing on these. New colors, you know, still same killer shape. Uh, this is my go-to fin for like all water activities, diving or um, body surfing. It's a great short blade for body surfing because it gives you like quick thrust, so you can match the wave speed really quick, get on the wave fast, uh, make a lot of late uh, late uh, takeoff decisions if you have to, which is is the, is the case a lot of times. So a lot real maneuverable and fast acceleration in the water, explosive uh, acceleration, uh, short broad blade. It's got like the beveled rails uh, for a lot of control. So when you're riding this thing, it actually goes on edge. And it's almost like a, a, a channel and a, bo on, on, and a rail on a bodyboard. So it's really super, um, uh, really a, a very uh, high performance, a lot of control, probably the most control of any fin that I've used in terms for body surfing and just like this as far as a wetted surface. Uh, it's got a delta tail, which um, I'm pretty uh, stoked on in terms of like uh, directing water flow. Um, and I'll get into how water flow affects kind of the design ideas of a lot of the channels that I've done. And um, anyway, so a couple new colors in MS Vipers. Um, we still got uh, the Delta Vipers. This is my go-to fin for bodyboarding. I like how this uh, this fin, uh, the asymmetric design, works really good for um, uh, weight shift as you're uh, bringing your legs in, contracting your legs. Also, how this goes through the water is really fast. I found that. Uh, just kind of a, a straight edge. Water shears off a straight edge pretty quickly. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't have a tendency to wrap in any particular direction. Which, if it's curved like a crescent or even a bat tail, water has a tendency to migrate towards particular points. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, we have like a small wing here, and this is all about like additional control off of this edge. Because when you're riding, you're actually it's kind of going through the water like this. Mm -hmm. And so this part is really key for control and grip. Um, when, when you're uh, engaging in, in spin moves or stalls and all that kind of stuff. Um, but the sh uh, um, straight edge here is really quick, and this just gives you a little bit of extra speed on that with that little directed thrust. Um, and then, you know, I got the Clark Little Fin. Clark, uh, you know, he's a, he's a man in the shore break. Um, great guy, awesome human. Um, these are the Clark Little Fins, and the rubber layup here is a little different than the Deltas. Same shape, which is pretty cool, um, but uh, he's got uh, a little dot here in the, over his CL logo, and uh, so it's a little bit different uh, um, layup with uh, 
kind of this uh, rubber on the side it's a little bit harder than this rubber so your big toe kind of goes on the shorter part of the blade and most of your control starts with your big toe I found so this kind of directs that out to your big toe um, on this wing here so it kind of uh, really uh, helps the uh, you to take advantage of this little wing here um, yeah, I don't know if anyone has any questions and if you do what I'll try to do is after this thing's up I'll go through the questions and then we can I'll try to answer them one by one but you guys might may or may not be uh, familiar with the gyro leashes this is where kind of my whole business started it's actually this wrist leash and the idea here is to try to make the, the smallest form factor on a board so that while you're using it it kind of becomes invisible to the experience like you it will, won't get underneath your arms so it's the smallest uh, coil you know this whole thing is like this big compared to other leashes in the market that are longer uh, this has a, a really nice um, um, functionality where it's just never in your way. Uh, the double the double buckle is something we came up with. We innovated this, um, and uh, this is kind of one size fits all. This double buckle works good for if your arm is like this size, if you want it to increase in size, and depending on if you have like a, a thick wetsuit or something, you're gonna wear it under. You might want to move it to this buckle, which increases the diameter of the of the cusp like pretty big, uh, considerably. So that's the feature or the functionality of that. Also this little um, kind of um, uh, bow tie zone here works good because when, it, when it's on your arm, this kind of crease is really good for your uh, inside your, your elbow here. Let's see, gotta get this thing on here. Oh, I have to put it on the other buckle. But you can kind of see it here, like when you bend your arm, it's it fits in there pretty nicely. That's, the, that's why that is designed the way it is. So uh, I'll get into some board board designs. You know, what's cool about Mark's collection here is he's got like boards from 32 inches all the way up to 46. So really there's a board in here for basically everyone. Um, and we do a couple different lines of boards. Like we have uh, polyethylene cores, which are really, um, uh, durable, they're probably the most durable core because all the other parts of the board are polyethylene or have a polyethylene composite so um, when you heat weld everything together they're very very durable so that makes for a very durable and strong board um, and then we add, we'll add we'll add an ec extra stringer to get the stiffness up there and some of them are double stringer um, and those are usually uh, less expensive than some of the propylene models or all of the propylene models for that matter um, <clears throat> you know the thing with our, our line is we have um, we do a bunch of different uh, templates. So uh, um, we have a, a pocket template, which is all about control, which is a different, it's kind of got a wider, uh, um, um, narrower narrower nose. It's kind of hard to see the differences just from the, uh, uh, just it's, it would be hard to see the, the, the nuances of these templates without being in person and comparing them, them all. But the pocket's basically about control and there's uh, slightly wider tail, narrower nose. Uh, then we have um, like the style template, and that is uh, let's see, uh, style template is uh, more. Un it's a more universal template, so it's kind of got like a good balance. It's got uh, um, in between speed and control, and then the fastest board we make is called the, the launch. And then um, uh, the pro is another model that we've just kind of come out with, and some of our team riders have. Uh, requested certain types of boards, shapes, and, and features, and so we just decided to actually come out with the board that the, the pro guys are actually riding. So that's the the, the pro model. Um, and I, I'm going to explain a little bit about some of the kind of new features we got going on uh, and the differences between the channels. So there's um, like the typical slot channels we call them, which are kind of wider at the base and narrow at the nose. These kind of create quite a bit of turbulence and resistance back here. They're not as fast as the other channels, but that extra uh, uh, turbulence and resistance creates uh, kind of a strong hold. So uh, it can kind of hold you up higher in the, in the lip. Uh, we, we have these on the stock launch models because uh, it will hold you in a real tight high line. And uh, you can kind of see the shape here is wider at the exit than it is at the entry. Um, the other thing that we have innovated is this, uh, it's kind of like this vent channel. And uh, what this is all about is 
having a wider entry point and a narrower uh, exit point. And the way it works is the amount of surface area here is about the same as the curved surface area back here. So if you were to, like the way I like to explain it is like if you had a Coke can and then you squash the Coke can flat, it would kind of fit up here. But as you enter the curve, that Coke can would kind of get tighter and, and be brought into an arc. So it's the same amount of service area, it's just uh, in a uh, different curve. And so that's a real fast, uh, doesn't affect the water flow going in, but it gives you a lot of uh, hold here in the, in the edge. And then a new, um, a new channel that we're, we've introduced with this, this uh, um, uh, it's like uh, we call this a tri-crescent. So if you kind of see here, there's actually a small crescent here, and then there's another crescent and then a uh, third one here. And so the idea here is to kind of, uh, again, you know, create uh, focused areas of the water flow. And so this is the primary one off your rail, and this is the secondary one right here. And so getting back to the idea of the fins that I was discussing earlier about how the water flow is directed in particular areas, this small little, small little nuance here, this little uh, scallop or crescent, kind of directs water flow outward to these points. So not, now not only do you have this as your main uh, focused area for, for um, directed water flow, but you also have this, which is a little bit inside. So it gives you a broader uh, area for this directed flow. And we, the, the difference between uh, this uh, shape, I guess, of, of the channel and some of the other ones on the market is we've left the, the front, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the center here flat. And uh, as a result of that, there's a little bit more lift in this tail. So it's not just you have two hectic channels here. You actually have a little bit of lift here to kind of maintain speed and looseness. So um, the other thing that's kind of cool about this is this, this is a combination of different vent channels. So you have a vent channel here, and then this is also a small vent channel. So we've gone wider here with a smaller one here, and then a flat section in the middle. We found this combination to be pretty effective as far as like um, uh, speed and control. This is like pretty op optimum as far as what we've tested. Um, but we're always trying to innovate to another kind of uh, thing we're starting to do, which is this. Uh, in our DK board, we have these small ribs here. Um, they kind of create a similar effect to a channel, but it's more, uh, that effect is more centered towards the very tip here. Uh, we have small, we've, we've, we're just under a full crescent, uh, just for durability. Um, we found that, you know, if you go all the way to the ends, a lot of times, uh, it, it will uh, be pretty, super fragile. It works pretty good. And this, um, I'm not the best drop knee guy, but all, all my drop knee guys that, that, I, that I talk with, uh, this works pretty good for them in terms of uh, hold. So again, this is a crescent tail. This is going to direct, water is going to kind of come off of here, kind of direct towards the, the corners, right? So not entirely, but generally speaking, it will direct it towards the corners, and that's where it meets these ribs. Um, Mark, any questions? I, I think I, that's kind of most of it. Yeah. Um, Let's see. The full crescent. Yes. <clears throat> Why do you use the full crescent on that model, but not some of the other ones? Yeah, this is well. This is um, kind of a more uh, delicate than say this one, which is kind of uh, like a typical board. So, a typical board uh, has a more flat section here, and uh, this is more about durability and uh, uh, resistance to damage. Um, those pegs also uh, do feel like they they have a pretty uh, good effect of, of, of feeling. So um, without it being, you know, I think this is probably a little more sticky, directed like more like this towards the, the tail, which mm -hmm. would, would definitely create a kind of a, a more hold. Having a little bit of flat kind of gives you a little bit of looseness just in the tail there. Um, um, it does create two release points here and here, but this one's not as dramatic as say the tri-crescent, because it, it doesn't have that little, doesn't direct it so much right there. Um, but that's kind of the idea. Did that answer your question? I'm not Does sure. it? All right. Let's see. Um, let's see what else. Any other questions? The uh, Tanner McDaniel's. Yep. Okay. Tanner's shape. Uh, so we have the the 
the pocket, which is all about control. We have the launch, which is all about speed. We got the style, which is kind of a cross in between the two. The Pro is somewhere in between um, control and speed, and Tanner is somewhere in between the Pro and, and the launch. Um, his board, uh, actually he has a pretty cool channel too. It's a little bit longer vent. Um, it's entry point. I really worked on this entry point to be very uh, smooth. So there's absolutely no, um, very, very little resistance going in. And, uh, and then everything just kind of loads up towards the tail here. But it's a smooth in, inward transition that just makes it really fast. Um, what I did is I took a launch and I slightly rounded this template. I worked with Tanner to, to slightly round it. And uh, as a result, it's a, I would say marginally, be, marginally more maneuverable than a launch. Um, but still really, really fast. And, you know, to me, I think Tanner right now is probably the most technical rider there is in the water. Um, as far as, like, what he's doing in the, in the types of ways he's doing it in, he's, he's got to be, like, up there with, one, you know, one of the best guys. So, um, uh, and he really likes it. So I think this has been a successful uh, uh, c collaboration for sure. Mm -hmm. What about the uh, difference between the bat tail and the delta oh, yeah, tail? Let's talk about that a little bit. So there's a couple different tails, right, that, that I talked about. Like, one is the crescent tail, um, which is, uh, you know, basically, as, as you can see here, it's basically a crescent. So this, again, kind of concentrates water outward more, because uh, what ends up happening is water starts to grab here a little bit, and then it pulls the next water, bit of water over, over, over. So it, it kind of pulls things out. Um, it's not as fast as a flat tail. Like, if this is a straight flat tail, so there's no uh, uh, bias in terms of where the water is kind of being pulled towards. It's going to be fast. And that's why the, the fins are, have a flat, straight line, just to keep them quick. Um, I also I invented the bat tail a long time ago. Uh, this is a, a, a variation of that. These are two variations. One is we're calling more of the delta tail, which is more straight lines in between it. And this is a more rounded, broader, um, with, with wings on it. So this, this broader one uh, is more, um, has a little bit more service area. And in this case, it's just kind of a more loose tail, right? Because water, water in this case is kind of like, it's getting pulled um, kind of more towards the center here, just slightly. And uh, in this case, it's, again, it, between the flat sections, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's sharing off pretty well. If anything, converging a little bit in the middle here. And then this, this uh, point here in the middle where it typically converges the most um, is an additional point of hold. So these are, this is kind of a fast, a fast shape. This delta tail is a fast shape that, um, uh, and it feels pretty positive too. Like there's pretty distinct release points. Like this is your main hold, this is your secondary, and this is your third. Uh, and then in this case, it's a little bit looser, the rounded, rounded, uh, more rounded bat tail. This is a kind of like where uh, the, the original one was a little bit more round than this even more dramatic. So looser, uh, this is your, this holds you in pretty well. So this is just kind of a combination. Uh, I don't know if that answers it. It's, it, it gets a little complicated um, in regards to the, how all, uh, all it works. But after trying, you know, thousands of variations and so forth, we've kind of concluded like, okay, these are like, this is the, as far as we can take it right now. And then always try to improve and, and work on new things. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Thank questions? you so much. Yeah, no worries. Cool. Yeah. Any other questions or? Um, your Thunderboard. Yeah. It's not so thick and big shape as some of the other brands guys do. Let's see. Um, so it's a little faster, it would seem. Yeah, well, there's different, like, this is a massive board. You know, this is for a bigger guy, you know, mm -hmm. or, or, or gal. And uh, this is a 46, so... Um, Scale-wise, this is a little bit thicker too. Like it's mm -hmm. not just uh, just a bladey board; it's a little thicker. And so, uh, um, yeah. So, but this is a performance board. You know, it's got all the performance materials, um, and uh, you know, it's it's a it's this is a, a pretty darn good board. Um, you can see here. Also, I didn't really talk about it yet, but there's the flex factor. Um, what we've done is every board in our model, or every board in our line basically has a different flex characteristic. And so we've quantified that for everyone so that you can kind of figure out what, what flex you like. 
And then in the future, if you buy more boards, you can kind of figure out, okay, well, I want something stiffer or softer. And generally, uh, the, the, the idea is that stiffer usually equates to a little bit more speed, but not as much control. And softer is the opposite, more control, but not quite as fast. A lot of times it will, um, depending on the conditions, it will um, absorb, kind of absorb speed as you go, but you can control it pretty well. Um, there's also, like, these are, I kind of consider a bodyboard as like a system because it's not just a matter of the shape, but the shape works in conjunction with all the materials and the flex of it. So that's uh, a really important thing to, to keep in mind is, like, you know, your, your shape should work in conjunction with your, with your material combinations. So that, and that gets kind of complicated, but, you know, we've been at it for a long time. we got it pretty well figured out. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Sick. So I think that's it. Flex Factory, you guys, so I think went down all the boards. Um, yeah, not too much randomness, but anyway, that's it. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Mahalos. Uh, yeah. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the, in the uh, no, uh, notes or comments or whatever, and I'll try to answer them. And uh, that's it. So you can get, uh, you know, here here at uh, uh, Miller's in Kona. You know, there's there's good. These are in bodyboard shops the world over. The better shops we, we're in, hopefully. So support your local shops. You know, that's what I suggest first. These are the guys that are like carrying the water of the surf industry. You know, and so I think it's important to, to support the shops. Go in, support them. Um, you know, only buy online if you don't have access to a shop. You know, make a friend with the with the surf shop owner you know and before you know it, you'll probably get a good deal from them so that's my <laughs> that's my last takeaway from it support your shops hey mahalo yeah okay right on right on shoot so i'm gonna take this thing back and uh let's see here i guess just sign out say everybody uh thanks for tuning in and um yeah if you have any comments go ahead and i see there's a bunch on there so i'm gonna try to get to those at some point but thanks for tuning in and uh, if you have any questions go ahead and Hello.